Good morning. It's Wednesday, so it is time for another Business Analysis Live. My name is Susan Moore. I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at IIBA. And I'm Scott Bennett. I'm the Manager of Business Analysis here at the International Institute of Business Analysis. Today, we've got a topic plan. We're going to talk about SWOT analysis. So SWOT analysis is something you might or might not be familiar with. So we're going to walk you through the basics first, and then we're going to go through an experimental exercise together with you, the audience, in our live session to go through and do a SWOT analysis. So Susan, when you hear about SWOT analysis, what do you think? Um, I think about fly swatters, but that's not what this is. <laughs> Um, the times that I've used SWOT analysis, it has been really more when I was working on the business side, and it was always when we were trying to get our minds around some kind of strategy, um, and we just needed a way to organize our thoughts, and this was a great tool to, to do that. Yeah, I learned about SWOT analysis back when I was in business school. Um, it was a way to figure out, you know, how you want to strategize in your organization. Um, so why don't we go through the basics today? Um, we are live, so if you've got questions, put them in the chat. We're seeing them as they come through here. I'm gonna share my screen and we'll start going through the basics of SWOT analysis for those of you who are not familiar with it. And while he's pulling that up, I just wanna let everybody know today we are having, this is kind of a, a live activity, so as we're going through this, we're going to ask for your help in filling out the SWOT analysis, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's next. So what? You did your SWOT analysis. What do you What do you need to do next? Because by the way, you know, there's. I always talk about the unsung heroes of all of our 50 techniques that we've got in Babak, and I've got my Babak today. This, I think, is one of them. If you're working on the business side, it is an unsung hero. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so the SWOT analysis you're seeing on the screen here stands for strengths in the top left, weaknesses to the right of that, opportunities, and threats. So it's a way to look at what are the opportunities and how potentially you want to strategize. And so this is a very high-level analysis technique. It's not a detailed technique, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, as you're looking at this, they might seem like random words on the screen. Let me drop a few more words in here. So here we've got strengths and weaknesses. These are internal to an organization or the subject that you're doing the SWOT analysis on. So what are the strengths on the internal side and what are the weaknesses? So for example, in an organization, you might be you might have a weakness of marketing. Um, you might have a weakness of lack of funding. Um, so there could be some weaknesses there that uh, you're looking at. So that's the internal perspective. The second layer below that are the external factors. So when you're doing the SWOT analysis, what are those things beyond the control of the organization or the topic you're working on that might influence it? So there might be some opportunities where there might be an open in the market, or there might be a threat. Um, it could be a regulation that's coming in that could be jeopardizing some of the things that you're working on. So um, internal, external, um, two different perspectives. But what this is doing is forcing you through the thoughts of uh, different perspectives. Uh, what are these different things? And this is not meant to be paragraphs and paragraphs of information. This is literally just a bullet list. So looking at it from different perspectives, you can tease out different information. And that allows you to sort of look at the big picture and then dive deeper. So we're going to go through an exercise here. And what we're going to do is I just picked a topic here electric vehicles. So let's do a SWOT analysis together on electric vehicles. Now, as I go through this, um, I'd like participation from you, the audience. And in order for this to work in our comments, because we're dealing with four different areas here, if you can put the letter up for the area where it belongs at the start of your comment. So for example, here, I put S colon low emissions, meaning it's a strength for low emissions. And as we go through and process these comments, we're going to fill this out together and then take a look at it and say, well, what did we learn? So this is our first time experimenting with this. Let's see how it works. Now, I will say before we get started, I am not seeing any comments in our, in our window today. So hang on. Yep. 
let me see what's what's going on over here because uh, we're definitely live and where can I see some comments where can I see some comments interesting hmm. Maybe there's a bit of a hiccup between LinkedIn and could it could be okay <laughs> let's see I know how fun is this <laughs> Oh, I see one coming through here. Perfect. Here we okay. go. All right. So Great. the gears are turning. Thanks. That's good to see. Woohoo! <laughs> Boy, thanks for saving us, Jonathan. <laughs> All righty. All right. So Jonathan is is saying lower energy costs. That's a strength. All right. Let's see. We've got here. We go. Um, woo -woo. Oh boy, now they're coming in. We've got another one. No use of fossil fuel. That's another strength. Use of so fossil fuel. All righty. No oh, look, we've got Mark has given us a threat. Other, other um, electric vehicle manufacturers. Okay. We've got a uh, weakness here, need to replace the batteries and they aren't cheap, <laughs> Dionysia says. So, why don't we, so let's fill in the strengths box first. Okay, so I'll look for just for strengths, um, okay. And then what we can do is move on to the weaknesses. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, okay, so then so that's So electric what I vehicles, do. Low, yeah. So we've got low energy look, costs, I'm no use of fossil fuels. So those are strengths for electric vehicles. What other strengths do you yeah. guys see? All righty, we got a low competition. Ooh, all right. And you know, as we're doing this, I, I'm also thinking, you know, how would how would this look uh, as business analysis professionals if we were leading this conversation? And just so you know, it might look a lot like this, right? Because this is we're trying to encourage brainstorming. We're trying to encourage. Uh, really creative thinking, although we may not think about this activity as creative, and it could be a little bit chaotic, kind of like, kind of like right now where everybody has some ideas. So, you know, part of what we have to do is to make sure that we are facilitating it. So, Scott, that was a great uh, recommendation by you. Okay, everybody, let's stay fo focused just on strengths right now. So, that was a great, um, great thing to do. So, I feel like we've got some good strengths here. Um, okay, how about we move, one more you here. ready to lower, move on? Lower okay. air pollution. So one thing that you want to do when you're doing a SWOT analysis is make sure that what you're putting in here is based on fact, not opinion. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to fact check things today. Um, <laughs> but that's one thing you want to be cautious of. It's not someone's opinion that's going in here because it could skew the results. So let's just take a look. We've got lower energy costs, no use of fossil fuels, so it's good for the environment. Uh, low competition, a strength internal. So that might be an external, um, this Ooh. piece here. So okay. We'll just leave that for now. High speed. Yes. For those who, who are not aware, electric cars, very fast. The acceleration is very fast. It's, it's great to see. Um, portability, you can charge at home. So that's a good strength. Uh, lower air pollution. So we've got six items here. Let's look at weaknesses. What are the weaknesses okay. of an electric car? And I think we had a number of W's scroll we through did. there in the comments. And so, again, we're focused on the internals. So, first one here, need to replace those batteries, and they are expensive. That was from Dionysius. Okay. Uh, here's another one. We've uh, Mar Marina, Marina, high price. They are price. not cheap. <laughs> Yep. Oh, okay. oh, here's a good one. Oh, now question though, could this be an external one? Limited charging points. That's a great question, Susan. So mm -hmm. the question to ask here is, do you have control over that, that within what you're analyzing? Or do you not have control over that maybe influence? So limited charging points, I would say is an external threat. So could I'm gonna be. put that over here. 
and just you know side note everyone's business is a little bit different i actually worked for a public utility they had um natural gas and they actually had a division that that um, built the compressed natural gas stations. So that for them was an internal thing because they could choose to build more. Um, they're called CNG stations. So there you go. Uh, here's another one, hard to recycle the battery. That's a weakness. Ooh, hopefully I didn't do that uh, too quickly. All right. Let's see, looking back through here. Um, oh, I see one here from Rafa. Rafa? It says short trips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that one, for those of you not familiar, some vehicles only travel uh, 20 miles on a charge. Others can go 500. Um, oh, so it really good. depends on the vehicle that you're, you're choosing. Here's another one from Amanda. Charging takes longer than fueling. Good point. Yeah. And let's see. I have one more. Do we see any other? Do we do we already talk about battery life? Yes, we did. We talked about battery life. That's I right. see one here from Tanvi. Um, let me just pop it on the screen here. This is interesting. Silence oh. as a disadvantage. Hmm. So if I'm leading this conversation, I'd say, tell me more about that. <laughs> so let me tell you more. Um, I okay. own an electric hybrid. Um, it's, it's a full, um, it, it's a, yeah, I think full hybrid is what you would call it, similar to a Toyota Prius. So it can run on battery power alone, um, and it can run on the, the gas engine, it can run on both. When it's in electric, there's actually a whirring sound um, that the vehicle emits. It's, it's an artificial sound that they put in the vehicle. For those that are visually impaired, they can still hear that there's a vehicle around and that it's moving. So oh. silence is a great thing on the highway because um, it, it deadens the sound, but it can be a danger um, in areas where you've got pedestrians. Oh, I had I had no idea. Okay, yeah. so that's a that's a great point. Yeah. Okay, so we've got six weaknesses here. Let's move on to opportunities. So if you put an O in front of um, your comment, we'll pull out some of those opportunities. And so frame frame again for us what, what we should be thinking about for that opportunities box. Great. Um, so opportunities, we're thinking external. So we're looking at the electric vehicle. What are some of the opportunities beyond the the vehicle where where can this go where can this um i was gonna say what are the opportunities <laughs> well, exactly um, what, what are some of the things that we can take advantage of um uh as an industry or a vehicle so for example an opportunity could be um these vehicles it? can be used in environments that are self-contained like parking garages would need oh. less ventilation, for example. Hmm. How about this one that I've just popped up? Reduce air pollution. Could that be an opportunity? I'm... Let's throw it in there for now. I'm, okay. I'm thinking maybe that's internal. Might okay. Be, might be the example we chose here. All right. Well, and again, I think... This is exactly the kind of thing that if you're leading a conversation around this, sometimes you'll get these, you'll get an ambiguous response. And I think you, you might have to just make a call. We're going to put it here. But this, the purpose of this exercise is not just to fill in the boxes. It's right. really to stimulate thinking and then to take this the next step. So don't worry too much about getting right answers. There's no right answers here. Uh, and I think that's, again, the purpose of this is to facilitate the conversation. I've got another one for you. Um, this was marked as a strength, but I wonder if this might be an opportunity. Government subsidies. That is most definitely, when you get into governments, you're definitely talking about external. And so whether they're government subsidies for purchasing, maybe there's even government subsidies for manufacturing. So if we're a business that does that, that would definitely be something 
um, to consider. So I think that's a that's a great one. Yeah, for sure. Let's see any other. Uh, this one's actually other... a tough one in this example. Um, the opportunity, yeah. and, and I think this is just a real exercise, right? It's it is, and I think, but I think this is great that we're that we're modeling this because um, th these are very real things that it, that when you're leading this exercise that you would encounter. And you, as, as a facilitator of this exercise, have to not only <laughs> moderate the guests, moderate the folks in the room who are contributing ideas, but then you also have to be aware of that you are talking about the items as you are adding them to. You don't have to go too deeply at this point. You're still just brainstorming, but it does, it does lead to some really interesting conversations. So Aditya gave us this one increase in more energy checkpoints. Um, I don't know if that's a... Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that means, but it may be referring to when you've got an electric vehicle plugged into your home for charging, some manufacturers are actually allowing the technology to power your home. So if you lose power from your home, your oh electric vehicle battery could actually act up as a, as a backup. As a generator. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Um, so why don't we just throw that as an opportunity and I think we'll move on to threats. Okie doke. So actually, well, then I should keep hers up because, or his up, sorry, um, hackers. <laughs> is, is, that, is that potentially a thing? Could, could people hack the software that runs your electric vehicle? I think it is a threat, but I'm not sure it's unique to electric vehicles. Mm, I think okay. modern gas uh, powered vehicles, I have a 2023 vehicle right now. Um, so it's got a whole bunch of bells and whistles. I'm still learning how to use it. Um, <laughs> but it, it is tremendously dependent on software, not mm. just because it's a plug in or a, a hybrid electric, but just because of the technology we've now gotten cars. Um, so I, I don't think that's unique to electric vehicles. Okay. Let's see. Uh, how about this one? offer of our alternative fuels. So is our other kinds of vehicles, you know, I talked about, um, uh, so that, that natural gas utility that I worked for, their trucks ran on CNG, compressed natural gas, as their fuel. Right. Quite different, quite different from an electric vehicle. So, yeah. Um, oh. and, and in the sustainability, sustainability field, there are um, crop-based alcohols. There's also um, different oils, like cooking oil can actually be converted into a fuel. Yeah, uh, that's right. Different sources of that. There's pros and cons to all that stuff. But, yeah. yeah. Fire, I think, is a good one. Um, so I, I think there was, you know, there's always uh, news here in the United States about some electric vehicle that has burst oh, into okay. flames so yeah i saw that there was a tesla vehicle that that had mm -hmm. happened to when someone was inside yeah scary yeah those those batteries they run really hot so um so you do have to take extra precautions when now, you are at, that is a threat mm. is it external or is that internal is that something that's within the control of the company producing this or is it something that they can't control at all it just might happen that, that's yeah. one thing you might want to consider. That would be that would be the kind of question that again you would want to ask. And and this isn't so again, I'm really glad that we're doing this because it's showing that this is not a one way, you know, okay, tell me strengths, go, and we're just writing things down. But again, that role of the business analyst here is to uh, be listening and asking those questions along the way so it can be a dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's right. Let and I think see. it's important to note here, too, that this is something that gets you to know your stakeholders more. Mm -hmm. This interaction, you sort of get into their heads, understand what they're talking about, what they're meaning. So, yeah, it's helpful. I'll put one more up. Shortage of technicians. So are there is there a shortage of of uh, garages or skilled tradesmen that can repair these things? Now, I don't know. You might know since you actually have an electric vehicle. Um, and you know, my sense would be if there are, you're probably paying more of a premium for repairs um, yeah. because of that. 
Alrighty. Yeah, there was a, a great movie um, that was out called uh, Who Killed the Electric Car? Mm. And they interviewed mechanics that were working on electric vehicles. Um, and they actually preferred them because they were less greasy. They, they weren't dealing with oh um, some of the stuff that you have to deal with in an internal combustion vehicle. Oh, my gosh. I, I am sure that there because there is extra cost in having to get rid of oil and some of those parts because. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. OK, I think we've got enough here. Um, I, I think that gives people a sense of, you know, the type of dialogue we can have here and, and sort of where they go, what boxes. So let's wrap up this exercise um, and say, OK, we're, we're happy with the list that we've got here. You can imagine that you could have 20 points in each of these as you're working with stakeholders. Um, so when you're facilitating something like that, um, that's where facilitation skills come in. You might want to have people prioritize or vote on things to see what's most important so you can weed out some of the ones that are less relevant. Um, but let's say we've gotten to the end of our exercise. This is the, the sheet we've got. Uh, what do we do now, Susan? Well, we're not done yet. And, and let me just remind our audience today that the purpose of the exercise is not just filling out these boxes, but it is, you know, as I say, now what? You know, so what? Now what? Um, so the next part of this, again, we're still very high level. We're not trying to solution. We're brainstorming. We're fact gathering. We're trying to understand the landscape. So the next step in this would be if, if you guys are familiar with um, essentially you've just built what they call a two by two. Uh, so you've got, you know, two across, two up. And the next step or you can include this actually in some of the questioning that you do is to look in each box and I want you to think about this and I'm gonna this is from the Babok so I'm gonna I'm, I'm showing you a picture of something in in Babok um, is to ask some questions in each of these boxes so for example we were talking about internal strengths but if you if you look at the two by two that upper left hand quadrant you can ask questions around um, exploiting, using your strengths to exploit those opportunities. And because there may be some things in here that you can, as a business, immediately do something with. And so the next step in this might be, are there things that we can do? And that might be a different, that's probably, it could be a different exercise. It might, it's definitely a different artifact, but you want to take that box there. Let's look at the one just below it. So this you're thinking about um, weaknesses in opportunities. So you've um, so these are external opportunities. But um, but let's see what strengths do you have where you could mitigate some of those. So that's that lower box. Let's go to the weaknesses box, upper right hand corner. So here you're going to be using, let's see, using your strengths to ward off those weaknesses. Can you do that? And then below that, when you're looking at your external threats, these may be things that you are weak on and they are external. So what do we need to do? Can we avoid them? Can we get out of that particular product offering? Can we, you know, how do we, how do we mitigate this so that they don't derail what we want to do? So that takes you to that step. Then you might start to identify some things that you can do. So the natural next step of this is going to be um, some planning exercises, um, some prioritization exercises. You can't do all of this. Right. So uh, which are the ones that you really want to try to take advantage of now and then which can you do later and then plan those out? So. Yeah, so let's talk about that as an example. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to choose one down here in the external threats, limited charging points. So you don't have a charging station on every corner where you've got a gas station um, and it does take time. What could you do around that? Well, I've seen one vehicle manufacturer, I won't mention any names, but they're actually when they sell the vehicle, they will come to your home and they will install, install a charging station for you. So what they're doing is you're always going to be at home at some point. They're <laughs> mitigating some of that lack of public charging stations by putting them in your home. It doesn't solve all the problems, but there's an external threat that this particular company has decided to take on the way I'm looking at the strategy and, and addressing it by making sure that at home, everyone who purchases this vehicle has a charging point. 
So let's and let's think about how they got there, how they got to that solution, because, you know, unlike something in software where we might think about it in the morning and maybe implement it in the afternoon, this actually requires thinking through, OK, well, crazy, crazy idea. What if we had a service where we where we installed these? Well, that's going to require somebody at some high level saying, yeah, that sounds like something that we might want to take a look at investing in. So there's probably activities more strategic where they might do business cases. So a business case could be a next step for some of what you do here. Um, then that might lead to you know, approvals. You might be looking at, are there competitors that do this that we could partner with? There's just all kinds of things that you might consider in that business case. But then you make the decision. Yep, we're going to do it. Well, then you need to go into a planning phase. And again, you'll have some information that you can take into this. So again, this this SWOT analysis is not going to get you to, this is the thing that we need to do and we need to go put it in our backlog and do it next week. It's strategy. It's getting you to name these things so that you can start thinking about them. Also, we haven't had this question, although we definitely are going to take questions. So uh, make sure if you've got questions about this, you can pop those in. I, I said to I said to Scott earlier, you know, we might get the question: Is this a living document? And it it isn't really. You're you're thinking about these strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats at a point in time. So it it probably isn't worth it to try to maintain this. You really are doing a point in time. This is the analysis of our landscape. And then what do we want to take advantage of? And when you, you know, when, when you have a different problem, you might start with a different one of these. So. Yeah, that's right. And if we look at one point here, sort of that same one, limited charging points, another piece of analysis you could do on that would be maybe getting into some data analytics, hmm. you know, being able to pull in some geography data, but what other charging points in major cities? What about more rural settings? Um, so you, you could be, getting in some data analytics and diving deeper. So I, I think just to underscore what you were saying, Susan, this is sort of the high level tip of the iceberg starting point. And there are a number of different ways that this can then start to go down a path where you would more analysis using the other 49 techniques in the battle. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, I'm, I'm also thinking about my experience in the natural gas world. Now, I, I spent most of my career in finance and insurance, so I, I was familiar with that business domain. But if you are not familiar with the business domain and you've been tasked with leading SWOT analysis, I'm going to tell you, this is a good opportunity for you to be able to ask all of those questions about how things work. So uh, so there's not going to be any dumb questions in this one. So don't, don't you know, don't... Um, get hung up on, um, am, am I asking something that everybody in the room knows? This is a great way to uncover information in, in your group setting. So strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats, it may be that not everybody thinks of those things in those ways. So it's great for cross-pollinating when you have different business units represented in this activity. So take advantage of asking those questions about this business because you really want to get to the facts. I like that. I like the reminder. It's fact finding. It's not opinion. Um, and, uh, and, and you want to make sure that you are really identifying them internal and external and, and, and I'll just kind of add another thing about external. We often don't think about the external impacts of either the software we build or the business that we do, sure. yeah. but we should because some things we don't have a lot of control over and we need to make sure that we plan accordingly. Can I give you the greatest example of this? Every business was impacted in 2020 because probably when they did their SWOT analysis, they never considered what if we have a pandemic that shuts down the world. <laughs> Think right. about how many businesses went out of business because it, that that just wasn't on their SWOT analysis. Yeah, that's a great point. And you think about the organizations that were supporting a work from home partly mm -hmm. type of thing. They had figured out the technology and how the stuff would work for organizations that had never experimented with that. Yeah, this was a huge shift for them. Um, yeah. A lot of growing pains in that in 2020. 
Yeah, so it's it's a really great exercise. And this is why I refer to this as one of our unsung heroes of our techniques, because I, first of all, I enjoy any technique that requires brainstorming. And this really does. And we're, we're really asking people to dig deep into their knowledge of the business and the ecosystem that they might be working in and, and fill these out. And it, it this may be a brand new exercise to some folks. They may not have thought about this in these ways. So I think this is great. Um, yeah. And I'll just add too, if you're an experienced business analyst and this seems a little bit intimidating, um, the key skills that you need in this are really facilitation skills. So if you've got those facilitation skills, um, read up a little bit about uh, SWOT analysis. I think what we've given you here is probably enough to go on. But really what you're doing is making sure the stakeholders are engaged and people are contributing and, and you've got some good, healthy discussion there. Um, so facilitation skills really, I think, are key um, to doing this exercise uh, rather than being the quote unquote SWOT expert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see. So do we have any questions today? I know some folks are still offering up uh, some strengths, weaknesses, opportunities. You know, Mark Mark talked about um, from here, you could go into use cases. You could, by the way, I think use cases are also another unsung hero, um, but that's just me. So yeah, lots of ways that you can go. And you know, there's not uh, there's not a straightforward answer. So we can't tell you today, after you finish your SWOT analysis, you should do this. That's, you know, if you are um, a skilled business analysis professional in an organization, you may decide once this, it may become evident to you where you need to take it next, um, either because of the responses in the room. Oh my gosh, we absolutely must take advantage of this opportunity today. We've got everything that we need. Let's go get this on our, you know, one year plan. Let's make that happen. Anything else, we're just going to wait. So you'll get those clues. So listening is a big part of this exercise. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> I, I went on a, a consulting course years ago. Um, and in that, the consulting mindset basically is you're relying on your customers. This is external consultant. I was an internal consultant. You're relying on your stakeholders to direct you where the next step is. And that's exactly what I, I think this is, right? It's it's that start of discussion and, okay, guys, we can go this way. We can go this way. We can go this way. What are your thoughts? Where would you like to take this? You might have a CEO that has a very um, strong opinion of something or maybe um, some stakeholders that are um, subject matter experts that say, hey, we should be going down this. Really, you don't have to answer that. It's your stakeholders that are directing where you should be going next. Yeah, this is where having these tools in your toolkit are essential because your stakeholders in the room may say, well, we wanna do this next. And, you know, I think these these techniques again the 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 out the deliverable from the technique is usually not the thing that they're interested in it is all of the conversations or the planning that come about because of those discussions so it's yeah. it's a good reminder there's not a defined path for each of these things um we've, we've got a question from jonathan when are we going to talk about business cases <laughs> oh boy so it sounds like that's something that we need to talk about in 2023 because yeah that most definitely could be something uh, that comes out of this. And yeah. um, it would be good to know what's what's a business case all about. So Jonathan, we're going to book that. So yeah, great, great, great. Thank you. Excellent suggestion. Yeah. And if you do have suggestions for other topics, um, you can put them in the chat here. If you think about them afterwards, um, you can reach out to us. We do have an email address that you can connect with us on. Um, let me just pull up the banner, I think. That's right. Live right at IIBA.org. We love it when you send us ideas or if you even if you just want to let us know, have you used any of what we've talked about? We'd like to know that, too, because um, yeah. we like to talk about things that you can take back and use right away. So. Yeah. So I hope this has been helpful for the audience. Thank you for all the participation. That certainly makes this more interesting and, and more realistic for us to go through rather than uh, we stage a little play that we've got here. Um, so thank you for working with us today. Uh, we do have um, other sessions coming up. But Susan, why don't you tell the audience where they can find other sessions like this if they've missed some of them? 
Well, we repurpose these as podcasts. And so if you're just seeing us for the first time or there was one that you missed and you thought, oh, I missed the live broadcast, you can find us anywhere where you find podcasts. We're on Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon. You can also find us on YouTube and you can get half a CDU if you are uh, an IIBA member you're needing some CDUs, you get half a CDU for listening. We have um, really enjoyed this topic and hope that you have found it useful today. We will talk with you soon. So stay tuned. Thanks everybody for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and we'll leave another one right here for you to help you in your business analysis career. If you haven't subscribed to the IIBA YouTube channel yet, you can click over here and click on the bell icon to get notified every time we publish a brand new video.